is that house for sale? And you guys say, yes, that house is for sale. All right, time out. Is that, that is what we call customer level service. You didn't lie to them, but you didn't really help them because they could have called any one of you in this square right here to find that information out. So I didn't really give them any information that they couldn't have got somewhere else. Understand? Uh, they say, oh, well, how much is it listed for? And you go, oh, it's listed for 145,000. That too is actually called customer level service. I didn't give them any information that you guys couldn't have given them. You could have looked it up on the MLS and said, hey, it's 145. So we are still giving customer level service. And the guy goes, 145, that seems awful high. Do you think he'd take less? And you go, yeah, he told me he was motivated. Ding, 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 ding. You just now told him something that you guys may not know. Because he's my listing, he told me he was motivated. I now helped this guy on the phone. I gave him information that he could not gain anywhere else. So I literally have created implied agency because I'm now helping him. Thumbs up. All right. So he says, oh, okay. And he hangs up and he turns to his wife and goes, hey, I just got off the phone with my real estate agent. He said the guy was motivated. Uh-oh. He may think there's agency and there may not be. You just go, oh, crap. There's another guy I lost. That is implied agency. It is still agency. All right. So there is a question that will come up. Implied agency, bad. Express agency, good. But implied agency is still agency. You still owe them all of these obligations. And if he says, well, my agent didn't tell me that. And you go, well, I didn't think there was agency. Dude, you helped him. You created agency. So there could be a problem. So what you should have done, 145 seems awful high. Do you think he'd take less? You know what, sir? There's a Starbucks right around the corner. Why don't I meet you at Starbucks and I'll show you everything. So you go to Starbucks and before you start, you go, Hey, what I need you to do is sign this buyer's agency agreement and let's make this express agency. And now I can open up the folder and help you and do everything because we both know I'm your agent. All right. So the whole job is to take this customer, convert them to a client through express agency. You can do it through implied, but it's not good. All right. So remember that implied bad express good. They are both still agency. So when you're sitting at the closing table, you've got one client, one customer. You have got one client, one customer. All right. That's called single agency. You represent one side. Now, there's one last term over on page 129, 139 that we didn't talk about called non-agent. A non-agent. This is a REMAX person. Really? Nobody? Does the humor lose its appeal over a microphone? A non-agent. A non-agent. Think of non-agency, and you will hear the term transactional agent, intermediary. This is a case, and I've only done this about three times in 19 years, because typically most buyers and sellers, when they're selling their home for sale by owner, don't think of an agent as being the person to call they usually call their attorney. 
So for sale by owner is the most common time you will see this happen. What you get is a seller that has sold their house for sale by owner and they found a buyer, but they don't know how to fill out the paperwork. So they will come to you and go, hey, Raymond, I do not need you to broker. I've already found the buyer. And remember, that's what a broker does, brings buyers and sellers together. He's already found the buyer. I just don't know how to fill out this purchase agreement. Can you help me? Yes, but before I help you, I need you to sign this form called a non-agency agreement, which will make sure that everybody in this deal knows that I'm not your agent. So think of it like this. I have got two customers. I am not helping either one of them. I merely say signature here, date here, pay me 50 bucks. All right. I am not helping them. If one of them says, hey, that seemed awful high, could I've gotten it cheaper? I can't help you. Because if I help you, I create agency. And I don't want agency to be created since i didn't broker this deal i don't want to get caught up in the lawsuit if this deal goes south i don't want one of them to go well my agent said no 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 no, i'm not your agent you signed this form all i did was point to signature date sign here notarize and i'm done so you just call him a consultant you can call whatever you want. And they have a lot of different fees, professional fees, uh, transactional fees, intermediaries. The concept here is I have two customers. I have no loyalty to either side. The other way to think of it is kind of um, my allegiance lies to the paperwork not either person i all i do is make sure oh you got the signature you got the date i'm done and you typically get paid a flat fee 500 a thousand something like that all right i've only done it two maybe three times total it's not very common because most for sale by owners tend to think of calling an attorney to get help all right ross you're freaking me out man you're on you're on my you're on my picture twice here did one of it freeze yeah because one of them's frozen yeah all right all right so we're cool right 90 percent of your job one client one customer you're going to have about one percent or less you have two customers. I have no loyalty to either side. And I don't want to have loyalty because if I do, I create agency. And agency means I have certain obligations to them. And I don't want those obligations. My wife's bringing coffee, but she's trying very hard to avoid the camera. Oh, she got out of here too quick. <clears throat> All right, cool. Now, here's another key part on page 141. The compensation we receive does not create the agency. The fact you are getting paid is not what is creating the agency. The fact you are getting paid is a bonus to this agency. You can actually work for free. It is called a gratis agent or gratuitous. 
Have you guys ever heard of an attorney doing pro bono work? Attorneys will do pro bono, meaning free, to certain clients as a goodwill gesture to their neighborhood. If an attorney does pro bono work, he cannot stand in front of the judge and say, well, your honor, he didn't pay me, so I was only half an attorney. The judge is going to go, no, it's not. You chose to be in his attorney. Whether you get paid or not, it's irrelevant. You must be 100% attorney. Give him the same services that you would give a paying customer. The same is true with us. You can, in theory, list your mother's house for free. But you have to be an agent. You have to be a full agent. You cannot stand in front of a judge and go, well, I didn't get a commission on that, so I only did half of a CMA. No, you chose to be your agent. Being paid is not the determining factor. Compensation does not create agency. The fact you chose to sign the listing agreement creates the agency getting paid is a bonus to that agency so you can work for free if you do you are still required to give the same service to a free client that you would a charging client because money has nothing to do with it thumbs up all right so now let's talk about this thing that we have been bantering around a couple different times here. Your fiduciary responsibilities, there are six of them. Okay, where'd that go? This book loves its anagrams. Is that right or is it an Yeah, I think so. There are six responsibilities that we incur. This is where the difference changes between Peyton Manning's agent, Britney Spears' agent, a mortgage broker's agency, and us. We have six. They are care, obedience, loyalty, disclosure, accounting, and confidentiality. These are the six fiduciary responsibilities that we owe, all right? They spell out, as you can see, cold AC, cold AC. That, uh, that is our six responsibilities that we owe a client. Whether it's express or implied, we still owe the client that, okay? So let's talk about these six responsibilities. Care is the first one. Care. You must exercise reasonable skill and care to make sure your client does not get harmed. That could be physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially, any of it. Matter of fact, to take the sidebar, right now there is an issue that is being discussed in the real estate world, this whole showing of homes inside of this coronavirus issue that we're having currently. We are supposed to exercise care to our client. The Modulin Group has come out with an edict on how now our agents should show a home. For instance, we don't shake hands with our clients currently. We don't get closer than six feet. Our client is not to touch any surface in the property. As the agent, we will open the doors, We'll open the closets. Our clients are not supposed to touch anything. 
we are exercising